Hello my soccer universe! Finally Milan get the first win in the Champions League ever since the return to it and yeah I dragged myself out of bed for this one because I'm all not feeling all that great but hey for you my viewers I'll try to pull it out. In any case I am so overjoyed to have Milan yeah I even went for <laughs> putting my baby in the towel. No I tried to do this few days ago already uh, to make it look a little bit nicer and when it's fitting I think I can put that one. Um, yeah really really happy Milan still staying alive thanks to the messiahs. If you want to add the story in itself we'll get to that one. Uh, just before we go into uh, the games and I'll, I'll run quickly through all of the games uh, I quickly comment on the groups. Uh, of course, you will get a full uh, stats breakdown and so on in the stats cast together with the Europa League and the Conference League. Uh, but when I think about it, and if you look here, I mean, these are the biggest winners. Yeah, I mean, Milan's chances did not improve all that. I mean, Milan's chances are not all that great, but the improvement thanks to the win is almost through the roof as compared to others. Uh, so, yeah. They are the biggest winner. I would have worn them anyway. Um, I actually decided to keep the nicer jersey up here because this I feel Milan is not there yet. This was a 1990 winning team. Uh, they are not quite there yet. So I'm gonna talk over 12, 13, which is probably the last or second to last uh, third jersey for Milan that I really, really liked. So yeah talking already uh, too much. But one, when I say nation-wise, Portugal had an awesome week despite Porto losing, but all of them are favored to move on at this moment, uh, which I think is pretty remarkable. Uh, I'm in good position to move on. So poor Portugal, really, really great week. Italy, yeah, take Juventus aside. I mean, you have Inter qualified, you have Milan resurrected, Atalanta, yeah, maybe so and so, but Italy also not too bad. But I think the biggest winner overall has to be the English teams. Uh, I mean, their dominance in this uh, Champions League season, even Manchester United team that did not play great, still has enough quality to already qualify prematurely from a group that was anything but straightforward. And I think that the naked results only tell half of the story in this group because it could have gone so many different ways. Let's jump in. We'll start in very, very cold Kiev. Seemingly even the uh, pitch heating did not work. So they had tons of snow that had to be moved away. It uh, was actually quite interesting to see. Bayern did not really have too much trouble. I mean, the first goal by Lewandowski uh, was, you know, it seemed, it seemed, it seemed really was clear, but it fell in such a way that uh, Lewandowski can basically kick it into the net. Uh, they had a few more chance chances. I have to say, Kiev really gave it the all to finally score a goal. Um, but, you yeah, know, it was a, Manuel Neuer, a back pass that Manuel Neuer overhit and then it went to the post. But in the end, Bayern had the more chances. When Coman with a really nice shot made it 2-0. That was the game. Ah, uh, yes, Kiev came back. They scored a goal and maybe could have even gotten an equalizer. But all over, I think, Bayern's victory, despite all the um, uh, people missing through COVID, was never really in danger. I think most remarkable, I thought, was the quote by um, Nagelsmann, who again makes a fashion statement. Um, in the late game of that group, I'll stay not group by group, although you have to run down here, not quite, but uh, the Barcelona-Benfica game. <sighs> ah, it's so hard to say because uh, Barca had their chances and, uh, you know, they hit the post through uh, Demir. Uh, they uh, created many chances. They even scored a goal uh, that was taken offside, but on the other side, Benfica also, Seferovic needs to convert. So uh, while I think Barca over was the better team from what I could, could get, uh, maybe the better chances fell to Benfica and they could have made a big step there uh, that way. Now uh, Barca definitely needs to get a uh, result uh, at Bayern, probably even a win because only a draw and Benfica win will, will see Benfica go through and Benfica playing at home to Kiev. That will do it, a Kiev team that has not much to play for but pride. So uh, Barca honestly looking a little bit in trouble. Yes, they're, 
still they have the seven points Benfica five but you never know you never know it is not a comfortable position uh but yeah Benfica definitely need to win um I think that uh at um a draw for Barcelona and a win by Benfica would see Benfica go through based on goal difference so um in the head to head so just uh noting that let's move on to uh group f where via real and united it was not a good game and you could clearly see that uh gerard moreno was sorely missing for via real up front so any threat up front for via real was not really there uh but the game was really 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 bad from both sides and you know we can i don't want to argue about united because we know their troubles what we cannot argue with 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 right that they have quality up front that uh barely any other team on this planet has and it's so it was a really bad pass out from Ruli that got intercepted the ball falls to ronaldo who just puts it into the net i don't want to say against the run of play but it was not really coming at that point Villarreal had the better chances and then laid on uh sancho makes it 2-0 and suddenly United qualify, putting Villarreal even in a little bit of trouble because if Atalanta would, would, have won, uh, would win their game, that would actually mean that Atalanta um, would be in the prime position. However, Atalanta also doesn't manage to win. Uh, they get twice the lead. Uh, the first one through Zapata. And for me, this is a very important because once you see him celebrating, uh, watch the replay, you can clearly see the young boys banner and then it says Linzer ASK. Lask fans were there, of course. Young boys and Lask. Friends, 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 friends forever. So Zapata gets the goal. Uh, and, you know, Atalanta really tried. I had the feeling Atalanta tried to win this uh, half assed in a way. And so they always la- allowed a uh, young, young boys by see, but uh, Cheo gets the um, equalizer before the half. A little bit against the run of play and then when Palomino makes it 2-1 you really think okay Atalanta will, will will be cruising and easily seeing that out. Anything but Sierra in the 80th and Heft with a wonderful shot in the 84th turned the game around. And then Muriel with his first touch, I think it was a free kick, uh, make it 3-3 in the 88th. An absolute mad uh, end of the game. In a game that I really think At- Atalanta thought yeah we just uh, go there. Um, and get a win and that will, will be that no this was everything but easy and now uh in that group it all comes down to the last match the atalanta hosting Villarreal. atalanta needing a win it's that simple who uh if atalanta wins they are through any other result Villarreal is through that's kind kind of exciting at least something to play for speaking of something to play for uh group g is wide open absolutely wide open lil Getting a 1-0 win over Salzburg um, because, yeah, the goal, that was uh, the messiest goal ever. But the game really didn't have that many great chances. And if there were chances, there were more for Lille. Although I, th- I always had the feeling that Salzburg had more of the game. But many, many free kicks. And I'm thinking Maxi Weber is taking one free kick after the other because he just scored against Wall of Wolfsburg. Lightning doesn't strike twice. And you can take one bad free kick after another. So this was a little bit disappointing from Salzburg. A Salzburg team that now, you know, after three rounds, they only need one more win to qualify. And now they have two losses. And now you have a home game in an empty stadium against Sevilla. Also doesn't sound really, really convincing. I am not sure if Salzburg will qualify. Although them having a really, really good position there. They're still, uh, in a way, the favorites to go out, uh, to move on. Lille is also in kind of a precarious uh, position, uh, well, because they cannot uh, they cannot allow themselves to lose against Wolfsburg because a- any win that Wolfsburg get will see Wolfsburg ahead of Lille, and almost for everyone it's possible to go from first to last place. Uh, speaking of Wol- Wol- Wolfsburg, they lost to Sevilla. You know, give 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 the all, but I think over Sevilla the more uh, mature team, not a great one. Jordan very early on after nice racket, which is uh, one nil, and then uh, with the last kick of the game, Rafa Mir gets the two nil um, in a game that was vice Chakir again re- refereeing and re- again a Spanish team in in a way. 
First loss for uh, Florian Kofel, but that group is wide open. Uh, last is, as I said, Salzburg against Sevilla and Wolfsburg against Lille. Uh, and for everyone, anything is possible at this moment. Sevilla still kind of in a tough spot there. Uh, nothing, I think everything is settled more or less in Group H, uh, barring any disaster. Chelsea just rolling over Juventus, just like that. Juventus, an absolute abject performance. Uh, and Chelsea didn't even have to stretch themselves so much. Chaloba, uh, Reese James, Hudson Adoy. I mean, that, that, that was a sequence with 50 58 where they can make it 3-0. Three, three and then Timo Werner, after Zieg as, as assist uh, in stoppage time, make, makes it 4 nil. This was every bit of 4 nil. Juventus really, really being outclassed there. Um, and yeah, uh, I know results can go different ways, but it seems like Chelsea will win this uh, group. And then also third place is already decided. Zenit getting a draw in Malmö thanks to a very contentious penalty, a, a ridiculous penalty um, uh, late on for Zenit. Uh, the Zenit already had had, um, had a penalty missed by Zuba where uh, I was saved by the goalie. So yeah, uh, that group is also more, is more or less decided in every regard. Another group that uh, is now decided is uh, Group C, where Ajax come back um, from uh, f uh, to win at, against Besiktas 2-1. They were largely the better team. They just found themselves through a, a, a stupid penalty uh, down at the halftime through Gesal. So Alea comes on and does what he always does, scores two goals. Even had a third, well, that was taken off for offside. Ajax, of course, it looked a little bit weird because I didn't mind that the Besiktas will be playing in black. No, they played in white. Okay. Uh, Ajax playing in black, which of course are now these jerseys that everyone likes. I still like the Ajax home jersey a bit better, but that will come in the Champions League jersey review whenever I get to that. So Ajax, fifth win in the fifth game. Again, not really convincing, but largely the better team. And of all the opponents that Besiktas had to play against Ajax, they overall had the best performance if you just look at score lines. Just saying. Uh, okay, oh, they have to still play against Dortmund. Uh, speaking of Dortmund, they're out. Control about half an hour of the game, a little bit better. Yes, Holland missing, blah, 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 blah. Pedro Gonzalez uh, in the 13th, 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 night, and there was an, another big chance uh, by Sarabia in between. Sporting early, putting uh, the sights on moving on. Then uh, the second half was crazy. Back and forth, there was a rather doubtful uh, red card by Emre Chan. I still don't know why he exactly was sent off, but that game was then really going back, back, back and forth because it was pretty clear Dortmund need to at least um, go level, so only lose by one goal. Um, and Sporting knew if they have two goal, a two goal advantage, uh, that will see them already through to the next, 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 next round. And then they get a penalty, the Pedro Gonzalez uh, missed, but on the rebound, Porto uh, converts, making 3 0, basically se se setting game, game through. However, uh, early in stoppage time, Daniel Malen gets another goal, 3 1, and now Dortmund just need one to stay somewhat in call contention. They cannot find it, and Sporting through to the next round with Ajax. That is a result I would not have predicted, to be honest. I thought it will be between Ajax and Dortmund, but nope. Sporting is also through, so it's Ajax and Sporting. And uh, a very interesting group is already uh, prematurely decided. And as I said, I'm very pumped uh, for what Ajax will be doing in this competition. But, you know, it will all depend on the draw. They could play against PSG. Well, we'll talk about those. Um, group D also already decided on almost all accounts inter i think they scored four or five goals um i think on the third try jacob's goal counted in the 661st and in short short shot after he gets the uh sec a second second one honestly inter should have won this by a much 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 higher score line when it was 2 0 Schachter had two chances to i mean once hit the post had good chances i mean they could have been an equalizer there as well but with that one, all that Inter needed is that Real Madrid uh, don't lose, so uh, that they are already prematurely qualified, and that's exactly what Real Madrid uh, did. Uh, Alaba gives them the lead early on. I uh, think Toni Kroos, with a wonderfully weighted shot, 
you know, he takes aim, it goes right against the crossbar, comes down, it goes out again, but it was just about this much behind time. And the goal. Wonderful goal, to be honest. Uh, absolutely. Uh, and then Bonsema, after the half make, maybe 3 0, a little bit of scary scene when um, Traore suddenly uh, grabs his heart and goes down late in, in the game. Alaba also had to come, come off, but you know. That group, uh, it's only between who is first and second, but all the other positions are decided. Uh, Real Madrid hosting Inter for the playoff where Inter needs to win. Which leads us now to Group A and Manchester City PSG 2-1. Meaning that the head-to-head -head would, would have gone for PSG, but it doesn't really, really matter because PSG has dropped already twice points. So uh, they cannot catch uh, City anymore. However, that 2-1 is one of the most flattering scorelines. And you could see it, uh, you know, I watch, of course, the conference, uh, which means you go back and forth. City had such an enormous pressure already in the first half, uh, hitting the post, I think, through uh, Mares, creating chances, just not being able to convert them. But what what, what, what I could, could clearly also see, that none of the front three is tracking back, they're just standing there. And so it's left to seven players who are not all the great defenders to soak up the pressure against Manchester City. It cannot work. It just cannot work. I don't know who had, how Pochettino, who anyway wants to leave uh, PSG. It is so obvious. I mean, PSG at the moment is a mess. And I think the best thing that could happen to PSG is to get a new manager in. And from what, what I hear, I mean, Zidane is actually waiting just to take over that job and maybe get and he will probably the the, the um, uh, Galactico Whisperer he actually might do the job he's not technically great but what, what you need you need to have solid defense back there you need a hard working midfield and then uh, something to service the three up front to be honest I have so said so before one of those three cannot play has to come on as a sub you cannot have all three up front and then if Hakim is not doing anything where do you want to go City the, the one thing I have to say before I go to City, um, the one moment of brilliance, a Messi cross in and Mbappé is there, you know, out of nowhere they can score a goal. They take take the lead, however, Raheem Sterling with a nicely played goal and then still it, it looked messy uh, because Gabriel J Jesus, um, you know, doesn't take his uh, shot properly, but it falls to Sterling who can pull it, pull it in. And then uh, Jesus, uh, by now, Silva assist make, makes it 2-1, giving City that they absolutely deserve it win. There's no doubt about that. PSG was abject in many ways. And they still qualify because Leipzig uh, win 5-0 over Club Bruges, where Forsberg, you know, this game was done within 20 minutes. Uh, but yeah, major questions have to be asked uh, from PSG. Uh, there needs to be a revamp and I think Poch needs to come out and they need to hire another coach, which leaves us with the last group here, which is of course uh, Group B. Atletico Madrid Milan, first very testy first half. Milan large, largely the better team from what I could gather. Um, with, with Atletico more, uh, you know, falling over most of the time second half much better much more but i think milan were more serious and had more chances and then messias then scores the winner and i thought that at that point and they need need to win by two but no away goals don't count anymore so it's a simple uh you have it drawn with atletico it comes down to goal difference so uh, at this moment, Milan with that win actually moves ahead, 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 ahead of Atletico Madrid. And thankfully, Liverpool beat Porto, although Porto should have scored early and probably would have deserved uh, something out of that, that, that game, especially with, with, with the other chases late on. Yeah, I think Liverpool deserved it. And before we go back to the to, 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 to Milan game and the Messias story, that goal by Alcantara, I mean, Mane had one already ruled out, but that goal, the way he takes his shot, I don't even think he, he touches the ground. He perfectly, it goes so flat and then lifts up. This is one of the most satisfying shots I've ever seen. Salah then makes it 2-0. It it so Liverpool does the favor to Milan in a way. Uh, but you know, now they need to fall over to Milan. Milan, as I said, deserves it. But if you haven't heard about Junior Messias, this is an absolutely great story. He came over to Italy uh, and I think at the age of 25 he still was uh, playing basically on the Italian beaches, then got called up from a, a fourth tier side, did well there, 
got to Crotone where he had a good he had a good season uh, overall and Milan just took a chance on him and at least already paid pay, pay, pays off I mean the Cassie Grosenhaar Messias heads that in beautiful shot and you could see it with the celebration how all the Milan players say hey you did it you came from out of nowhere at the age of 30 you scored a winner in the Champions League that keeps Milan in for Milan I mean this is the dream this is one of the best stories I can remember for a long long time makes me this made me really 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 happy regardless of the result I don't think Milan will make it through because Porto is in a much better position uh, what Milan would need is a draw between Porto and Atleti. There cannot be a winner, more or less. Although they can, if Atleti wins, then Milan need to win uh, at least as good against Liverpool. So you need to kind of, you you know, Milan need to win, need need a win against Liverpool, and then more or less need need a draw between Porto and Atleti. Or Atleti win that is not better than uh, the Milan win Milan's win over Liverpool. So kind of a little bit. Uh, so uh, Porto looking the strongest in this group and to be honest just seeing it I think Porto would absolutely deserve going through from this group uh, let's say that and I'm even thinking before Milan goes into Europa League uh, uh, rather finish in fourth place and concentrate on the league but if you can go through the Champions League great so go for it in any case that adds it for match day five ends it for match day five in the championships like i said there will be uh stats cast coming tomorrow let me know what you thought about the games give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video subscribe to my channel if you want to see more i will talk to you soon bye hey there i really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too also please consider subscribing to the channel and click the little bell icon so that you can update it whenever anything happens in my soccer universe and with that have a wonderful day.